everyone so as you can see i'm back home so can we take a wild guess as to what that means i'll let you guys think about it for two seconds just two seconds you only have two seconds That's it. any ideas any thoughts well based off of my last video which is about finals week finals are over i'm back home which means the semester is Finished. It feels like just yesterday was the white coat ceremony, my first day of classes, all that stuff. And to think now the semester is finished and I have completed my first semester of pharmacy school. Wow. So like I shared in my last video, I was going to give you a recap of the semester and kind of let, let you guys know how I did, how it was, what I've learned and any information that can kind of help you out uh, for those of you who have just completed your first year first semester of pharmacy school or for those of you who are thinking about going to pharmacy school I really hope that this video can help you out because had I known some of the things I did going into pharmacy school definitely could have helped a little but then again every person's story is different and how I went through pharmacy school is exactly how it needed to go for my first semester so here goes all right so I know you guys are probably all wondering, like, how did I do in my classes? Well, <laughs> like I said in my video, Pray For Me, um, I was really, uh, had to do well on my finals to pass my classes. And um, not even just to pass, but to like, you have to maintain a certain grade point average. And I needed to get certain grades in order for that to happen. And just to let you know, they do not curve in pharmacy school. Okay, they do not curve at my pharmacy school. Maybe they curve at other schools. I'm not going to say like a general statement saying, oh, they don't curve at pharmacy school because I don't want y'all yelling at me saying, well, my school curves. So, but at my school, they don't curve. So there was no like extra points that I was going to get. Like my grades were my grades and that was it. So that's one thing. So I knew in the finals, I knew like I had to do well. So first final that I had um, was immunology, and it was incredibly hard. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, like, oh my gosh, I studied so hard, and it was so easy, like, everything came back to my remembrance when I was taking the test. No. The exam was very, very difficult. However, with um, that class, she gives other assignments where even if you don't do well in the final, you can still do well in the class. You can still pass because of the other assignments, because I guess she knows how hard the class is, so... Yeah, but that was the class that I was the most scared about because I really thought I was going to fail. Like, I really, really did. So, I took the final. It was incredibly hard, disappointed, and sad. She didn't post a grade till like, later on in the week, which is good because I still had other finals. So, that exam was hard. My pathophysiology exam, I studied, like, crazy, and I ended up doing really well on it. Um, we had both a, a cumulative final and then we had a, like a, a last our last unit exam on the same day so it was taking two exams but it went it turned out well and the other final that I had was for pharmaceutics that was another class that I was kind of scared about but I ended up doing really well on the final too because I studied my butt off and ended up doing well and um the last final I had was for my foundation the pharmacy class very easy class it was an open book final on our computer and like we were able to have our notes and stuff so that was I really did well on that. And then for um, skills lab, I um, ended up doing well on the final as well. So with that being said and having done well on my finals, which is what I needed to pass, I have successfully passed my classes. When I tell you guys, I literally wanted to cry because I really got to a point, especially in the Pray For Me video, I got to a point of thinking like, God, you have put me here and my grades are not showing that I'm supposed to be here. What's happening? So I was getting so scared and worried and, and fearful. And even when I was studying for these exams, I was like, God, it's not sticking. I'm not getting it. What is going on? So then I got to a point of, of, of realizing like, you know what? I, I, even when studying, um, one of my friends texted me and she, you know, really was just like, um, all the best on your exams, it is already written. And just that very, like, statement alone just was my reminder of just like, why are you worrying so hard? 
do the best that you can, study what you can, do not overexert yourself because it is already written. God already has the plan for your life set out. You know this. So why aren't you believing that? And when she sent me that text, I was like, wow, she is so right. I don't need to to, to, to get to the point where I'm thinking, like, when I tell you guys, I was literally freaking out. I was, like, trying to calculate my GPA, and that is exactly what I said not to do in my tips for finals video. I ended up doing it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm being transparent here. I did that. And that's what freaked me out. So if you're still taking finals, don't do that. Please don't do that because it will freak you out. But yeah, I did that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have a good enough GP to stay in the program and to go on to the next round. I was getting devastated. So um, when I read that text and, and, and on, um, on my Instagram page, I shared the Bible verse um, let me find it. Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7 and it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So that verse was just like, why are you even worrying? Why are you even stressing out? God's got your back. And at times I even had to watch the video to for finals because I had to encourage myself when I couldn't even get to, when I just was getting devastated and upset. But okay, so I passed all my classes, so I have officially and successfully finished my first semester of pharmacy school. Praise God. And when I tell you it was really only by God's grace alone, it was. Because there were moments where I really should not have gotten certain grades or you know, pass certain exams, but God's grace <laughs> is truly sufficient. Okay, so what have I learned my first semester of pharmacy school? <sighs> A lot of stuff. <laughs> but um, spiritually, I must say that I've grown spiritually for sure. Why? Um, I haven't really did it. I, I haven't done a video on this really, but I did write about it, but before starting farm school in the summer, I kind of had a rough towards the end of the summer. I um, had a really tough heartbreak, and I'm not going to lie that that kind of came into my first semester of farm school in the beginning. Um, I was still devastated and still really hurt by it. I was trying to get through it still um, in the beginning of school, so that was like a big distraction for me. Even though it shouldn't have been a big distraction, it, it was. Um, just because it was... Not only that, but, you know, having to be in an environment where you don't know anyone, you're by yourself, well, not by yourself, because you always have the Lord with you, but you're in a new environment and you don't know anyone, it's hard. You know, having, going from, like, being at a school with, where you're with, like, your best friends and you're with people that you love and care about, and that change, it's hard to adjust. So, coming into school with that was really hard and and also a distraction. Um, there were times where like I would be trying to study, but I would just be like so hurt and yeah. You guys can check out my blogs if you want to know the well, not all the details because I don't share all the details, but like some of the details regarding all of that. Those moments where I was really hurt, I really turned to God. So there were times I did have to just go out into my car and just talk to God and be like, God, I'm hurt right now. Today is not a good day. I know I have all this work to do, but I don't want to be thinking about this. And I am thinking about this. What's going on? But that time was necessary and important to spend with God and to and to have that time with him and to have that alone time. They say like when you are going through like the worst times in your life, that is when you really just cling to God the strongest. So with all of that, you know, I wouldn't say it was really distraction, but it was a distraction from myself, which is what needed to happen. I needed to stop being so focused on myself, but focus on what God has planned for me. And in doing that, you know, when I when I began to really just to cling to him and to really just get into my word and, and have that alone time and have those prayer and worship sessions in my car, 
God was like, yes, this is, this is exactly what I need you to be doing. And a Bible verse that I really share with that and that really helped me to understand that my time with God is not um, a distraction from my schoolwork and my time with God is not something bad is um, tr- Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. And verse 6 says, seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. And that's exactly what happened. I really sought God because I was in a lot of pain and hurt. And a lot of times that pain and that hurt is exactly what needs to happen to draw closer to God. So that's one thing I learned, especially in the beginning of the semester when when it seemed like I was getting distracted. But the real distraction wasn't from my schoolwork, but it was being distracted from the worldly things and from myself and focusing on Christ, if that makes sense. Yeah. Another thing that I learned, um, and I really want you all to know this, the school that I go to is a predominantly white school. Um, Diversity isn't really huge. I mean, I I really haven't seen many other cultures, mostly white. And there's probably only, like, a couple of us, like, I can count on my hand how many um, black people go to my school. And in the beginning, this was a little discouraging because it was like, um, it was like, wow, like, no one looks like me. You know, I I, I went to a, a very diverse um, undergrad. It was so beautiful because I got to learn about different backgrounds. So, you know, coming to this school, it just felt like I didn't belong. Why? Because of the color of my skin, because, you know, I felt like these students were so smart and I was just like, well, of course, like, I'm not going to do as well as them because no one else looks like me. So I had in my mind kind of really set myself up to fail without anyone even having to say anything to me. I had the idea of thinking like, I'm already not good enough. So let me already count myself out. So for those of you who go to predominantly white schools and you feel that way, please do not count yourself out. God has placed you exactly where you need to be. So regardless of if you feel qualified or not, he already has given you the qualifications by placing you there. And day by day, he is going to sustain you and he's going to provide you with what you need in order to achieve whatever the purpose is that he needs you to achieve at that place that you are at so I had that mindset of thinking like I don't belong here so I had already given up in certain areas giving up sometimes when I could have been studying like you know why even bother study this because I'm not gonna get it and that's it so when I got to when I realized this thinking I was like Dionysia who are you to even say that you are not qualified who is the God that you serve who is your father for you to even think for a second that you are not qualified to be here. I really was getting mad at myself. I'm just like, how dare you ever think that your God is going to just place you here and make you feel less than yourself and, and, and have you feeling like you don't belong and to set you up to fail. What? Like, what? <laughs> I got to a point of just like, all right, it's time for me to put in my work. All I can do is my best. And let God do the rest. And my mom always says that. And she even encouraged me during finals week. She was like, just do your best and God will do the rest. And I really appreciate her for that. Um, so I like studied really hard. I went to office hours, sought out my professors to understand the topics that I, was, I, that I wasn't really getting. Um, so yeah, I studied really hard and, and, and that's how I was able to do all of my exams. And part of me was just like, well, why didn't you do this this whole semester? You already counted yourself out before you even tried and I realized this is a pattern in my life of thinking like I'm not good enough so why even bother try I don't deserve this so I'm not even gonna go for it um your father is the lord and savior who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think so how Dare you try to count yourself out when he has already counted you in and placed you where you are and provided you with all the qualifications that you need? How dare you try to count yourself out? So when I, you know, towards the end of the semester, I began to realize this and then I realized I was doing really well. And I was like, well, look at that. 
why didn't I do that in the beginning of the semester? So that's something I definitely learned that I will carry into the next semester, realizing that I am supposed to be where, I, where I'm at. God has brought me here and he is going to sustain me every single step of the way. Sometimes we get to that point of realizing that we don't need to worry about what's going on around us. And, and just because we might be in an uncomfortable situation or in an uncomfortable environment, that we try to count ourselves out because we think that we're not good enough. We think that we don't deserve it. But I hope that me sharing this can encourage you to know to don't count yourself out. Don't think that you don't deserve good things or don't think that you don't deserve where God has placed you. And when it does get rough, don't think that you can't do it. And, you know, in the Bible it says that God will never give you more than you can handle. So why ever doubt him? And, and, and looking back at the semester, I doubted so many times. I worried so many times and it was just like, God was like, my daughter, rest easy. I'm going to take care of you. For people who think you're not even going to make it. I'm going to show them by your by your life example that you can through me only. So I really hope that this video was helpful for you all. If you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts, please, please, please share them. And like I said, more videos are coming soon. I'm so excited to share them with you all. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. You can comment below or email me at behismasterpiece at gmail.com. Um, subscribe so you can get notifications about all the great videos that I'll be posting, especially over the time span of these four weeks. So stay tuned, be encouraged, and as always, be his masterpiece. Bye everyone. <laughs>